If I told you I could teach you a self-defense technique that worked in a wide variety of circumstances, it worked regardless of if they were bigger, stronger, and better at fighting than you, it worked for everybody almost all the time, you would say, I'm full of crap. Uh, you'd say I'm about to teach you some no-touch knockouts or pressure points or something like that. Some kind of BS. But no, this is a real technique. I've used it in real life. My wife just recently used it in real life. I teach it at every self-defense workshop and seminar I do. Uh, but uh, we got to take a trip. So this technique works best in sketchy parking lots. That's one of the places that people are often real nervous about this sort of thing. And I thought, where is there a sketchier parking lot than... Whenever I do Q&As or seminars or anything like that, there's always a lot of talk, particularly from ladies about in the parking lot. They walk out of the parking lot and they see someone sketchy or they see something sketchy. And that's how all these stories begin. And the big problem with it is human beings are, we're kind of prideful and we don't want to be rude. And those two things right there will get you in a lot of trouble when it comes to self-defense. Because one, we like to have the last word. We like to get to the bottom of things. We like people to agree with us. And two, if we're not exactly sure that someone is a bad guy, we don't want to look like a weirdo. This technique, which by the way, I already showed you the technique, spoiler alert, is not a technique like uh, you rip their throat out. But it's also not like a super boring, oh, there are no techniques, it's just about concepts and principles. Generally, you'll find the self-defense community divided between those two things, like, oh, there's no real techniques, I'm guilty of that, or, oh, if he grabs you here, do this, if he grabs you there, do that. Well, the truth is, there are techniques that work off of concepts and principles. This one is called, oh, I forgot something. There's a couple different variations, I'll show you all of them, we'll run through them real quick. The oops, I forgot something's the easiest one. It's accompanied by uh, this move here. Everyone knows it. You're walking and you go. You're not looking for anything. No one's looking for anything. No one even, no one that's ever done that move is actually looking for anything. But it gives you a reason to do the second part of the move, which is you go. That's the move. You've also got, um, oh. Uh, Gah, where you check your watch, like this watch here from Smith & Bradley, the sponsor of today's video. You've also got uh, the phone version. The phone version is cool because you can do this one right here. It takes a little improvisational acting skill. You go. <sighs> All of these techniques let you get away from the situation without looking like a weirdo or worse, the dumbest thing that so many people do and I don't understand it. And you're probably guilty of this too. Confronting the weirdo in the parking lot. Or if not outright confronting, just doing anything. Every assault report or robbery report or any type of report I ever wrote in areas like this started with the person saying, uh, okay, I had a weird feeling about a guy and then I took my body over to where that guy was. Uh, silently they add, sometimes not silently, like an idiot. In fact, my own wife, just last week used this exact technique to avoid being robbed in a parking lot just like this. Dude, people are annoying. Go! Here, get in the car. This is the Smith & Bradley Sands 13 Silverback Tactical Watch. Now, Tactical Watch, what does that mean? What well, was designed by a Chicago police officer to stand up to really harsh environments and working conditions. This model, this is the Silverback. They got a bunch of different models. I'll put a link down in the description below. It's got a NATO wristband, which it can get wet, it can get bloody. Uh, if it loops, it's got a double loop on the inside. So if one of these breaks, you don't lose the watch. It's got a, it's a dive watch too. So it's water resistant up to 300 meters. And one feature it's got for divers, but this works for anything, is a bezel that rotates so you can set a timer. You know, you set this to the minute hand and then it keeps track of how many minutes have gone by and it only rotates one way, 120 clicks. It's pretty cool and it's not oogie like a lot of tactical watches. A lot of times when you hear tactical watch, you think like, like, you know, you know what kind of watch I'm talking about. Smith & Bradley's marketing copy says they make exceptional watches for exceptional men. They do not break, which is why they have one of the best 
warranties in the business. They guarantee this watch to function for the life of the watch. They will repair or replace it. This one's uh, a little more stylish and it doesn't absolutely scream like wannabe cop or actual cop, whatever. It's uh, a little less obtrusive, if you will. But I'll put a link down in the description below. They have a bunch more watches. You should go check them out. They're all they're made in America too, which is cool. Acting is important. You gotta kind of sell it like, where did I park? Ah, oh, that is right. I forgot something in here. You don't wanna look weird because people don't wanna they feel like they shouldn't draw attention to themselves. If you feel like this weirdo is waiting on you, and this happened to me actually with the YouTube like W list celebrity thing, I've left the grocery store and had someone waiting, leaning on my car. It was bizarre. Please don't do that. Uh, you can, they're already, if you think their attention is already on you, but you aren't sure that their intent is nefarious, so you don't want to be like freaking out. Pretend you can't remember where your car is. Pretend you can't remember something. Tie your shoe. You could be like, oh, let me tie my shoe while you figure out and look around and see what it is that you're supposed to be doing. And then be like, oh, dang, that is right. And go back inside. And then no harm, no foul. You didn't offend anyone. You didn't hurt anyone. You didn't really act like a weirdo. You don't even have to tell anybody what you did. There's a more than 0% chance that you just saved your own life or avoided taking somebody else's. You know some numbskull is going to say now, like, well, why should I have to inconvenience myself for them? Okay, dude, don't. Don't. You're very tough. I'm sure you're very cool. I'm sure people really like you. Parking lots are sketchy anyway because they're transitional spaces. That's what John from Active Self Protection calls them. But the Walmart parking lot is the most sketchy because, like, look, like, People are allowed to live. You're allowed to live in the Walmart parking lot. In fact, this Walmart in particular, check this out. Uh, in these woods right here, there's a there's a tent city in those woods. There's an entire tent city in those woods. Uh, and homeless people are not necessarily criminals. There, there's some overlap there, just like any two groups of people. But if if transient populations make you nervous or in your area are a source of crime, it's a thing that you need to look out for. And that's one of the best parts about this technique is it doesn't it doesn't hurt anyone. Yeah, it'd be super cool to rip somebody's throat out. All right, that'd be super cool. You know, if they look at you funny. But it's just not realistic. So my wife and Maddox were leaving the grocery store. You remember Maddox? That's him. That's him right now. He's big and tall now. He has to hold the camera lower for me. Camera lower. Hold the camera. Thank you. They're leaving the grocery store. And my wife sees a guy who's not dressed appropriately for the season. He was in like, what is he wearing? Like a tank top, right? Yeah. And it's like freezing cold. And it's not appropriate, he's like a muscle guy. So her, her spidey senses are going off. Trust your intuition, you know. Your intuition, particularly ladies, that's one of the best weapons that you have. And just like every story, that every report I ever wrote where something bad happened, the victim of the crime told me that they had pre-attack indicators or they had a bad feeling. Uh, all the stories that, I, that you don't hear started with the person saying, hmm, I have a funny feeling about this. Oops, I forgot something. And that's exactly what my wife did. She noticed this guy who was walking parallel to Maddox and her, and there was another guy walking evenly. Like, very clearly, both of them fixated on her, converging as they walked out towards the car. And it was, my wife is very street smart. She knows. Someone right now who hasn't experienced a lot of this stuff says, ah, it was probably nothing. She's probably overreacting. That's not the way this works. Trust your instinct. If you've ever uh, experienced crime or investigated crime or been a criminal yourself, you're like, yeah, she was about to get robbed. These two guys were following her out to her car from a, a, an odd distance to be walking in tandem with somebody. And when she turned around to go back inside, there was another woman walking out and she said, hey, don't go out there because there's weird, sketchy guys, so don't go out there. And she says, actually, one of those guys followed me into the store and then went back out without ever even going in all the way into the store and buying anything. So trust your instincts, one, but if you don't wanna if you're not you're trying to sort out, do I confront the person? Do I make eye contact? Do I talk to him? Because some people will tell you what to do with like a bad guy is you look at him like, I see you, and you let him know that you see them. I'm not going to tell you to do that or not to do that. That's a judgment call, and it varies based on the 
suspect, based on your ability, based on a lot of things. So I can't tell you exactly what to do every time. But I'm telling you that this move right here. Ah, oh, I forgot something. Works almost every time. It's super hard to defeat that technique. And you can even you can even use it. Doesn't have to be this situation. You could just be sitting somewhere with someone, and things are getting confrontational. Things are getting choppy. You can look at someone and say, "Oops, I forgot something," and walk out the front door. And they will be sitting there waiting on you to come back. You don't actually have to come back, because that's the thing. You don't have to find out if you were right. Trust your instincts. Trust your intuition. You don't have to have the last word. You don't have to tell. Ugh. I've heard this story more than once, at least twice during a Q&A, where a woman came out of a business, saw someone in her car, like going through it, and then walked over to the car and said, hey, what are you doing? And got attacked. I know two people that happened to. <laughs> so how often does that happen? You don't have to find out. You don't have to get to the bottom of it. You don't have to have the last word. You see someone in your car rifling through your things. There's two, all the scenarios end with that person running away. You can walk over there and go, hey, cut it out, and they can run away. You can walk over and go, hey, cut it out, they attack you, and then run away. Or you can go back in the store and they run away. <laughs> go back in the store.